I am Major Nick Dannon. I will be the Master of Ceremonies today. Throughout the ceremony, you will be given cues to stand and be seated at the appropriate times. We are honored to pay special tribute to Colonel Eric Wade on this day as he will relinquish command of the 152nd Airlift Wing. We also welcome Colonel Jacob Hammonds as he assumes command of the 152nd Airlift Wing. The change of command ceremony is rooted in military history, dating back to the 18th century during the reign of Frederick the Great of Prussia. At that time, organizational flags were developed with color arrangements and symbols unique to each particular unit. To this flag and its commander, the soldiers of the unit would dedicate their loyalty and trust. When a change of command was to take place, the flag was passed to the individual assuming command. This gesture was accomplished in front of the unit so that all could see and witness their new leader assuming his dutiful position. He who held the flag also held the soldier's allegiance. This symbolic tradition has survived throughout military history. Colonel Wade has a distinguished record of service to his country, the United States Air Force, and especially to the 152nd Airlift Wing. As the outgoing commander of the 152nd Airlift Wing, he has served in an outstanding manner throughout his tenure. Equally distinctive, Colonel Hammonds will assume command of the 152nd Airlift Wing after previously serving as the Vice Wing Commander. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. Staff Sergeant Connell will now play the High Roller March. Thank you, Sergeant Connell. Chaplain Crandall, please come to the stage. When you're a chaplain or a pastor, it's said about when you visit people in the hospital or, or you call on different people, it's been said that just showing up is 90% of success. It's just being there when you're supposed to be there. And I think when it comes to being a base commander, although I've never been one, but I assume that a large degree of success is not just showing up, but finishing up and finishing up strong. And I think Colonel Wade still has a smile on his face. Yeah, there it is. With the great attitude and having led our organization in a very successful way, maintaining his integrity. And I just want to thank you, Colonel Wade, personally, for being a great base commander and a great leader for our base. Join me, if you would, in a word of prayer. Gracious God, thank you for giving Colonel Wade the strength to persevere the temperament to hold steady when I'm sure at times he felt like quitting, the emotional intelligence to manage himself and provide leadership during inspections, 
heavy deployment cycle, and significant leadership changes. His life is an example of how to get through a two and a half year challenge of leading a huge organization and come out the other side still smiling, choosing to have a good attitude, and maintaining integrity to the very end. Please continue to bless him and Mia in the coming days. As the mantle is passed on to Colonel Hammonds today, I think of Joshua being the successor of Moses, and the Lord said these words to Joshua, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. As I was with Colonel Wade, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Colonel Hammonds, be strong and courageous because you are leading these people to inherit the land I swore to them. May God use Colonel Hammonds and his youth to connect to the younger and upcoming airmen in today's military. May his lengthy and broad active duty experience bring fresh eyes, innovation, and continued excellence to the Nevada Air National Guard. May the strong values of family, character, faith, and communication and excellence permeate our base with life, energy, and morale. Colonel Hammonds, may God protect you from enemy attack and protect your family physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And a few years from now, when you're passing the baton to the next leader, may you echo the words of the great leader, King David, when he said, God is my refuge and my strength, an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, I will not fear. I pray this today in the name of the great shepherd and the leader and overseer of our souls. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Crandall. The presiding official for today's ceremony is Brigadier General Glenn Martell, Commander, Nevada Air National Guard, the outgoing Commander, 152nd Airlift Wing, Colonel Eric Wade, the incoming Commander, Colonel Jacob Hammonds, and the 152nd Airlift Wing First Sergeant, Master Sergeant Timothy Schweppe. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome our distinguished guests in attendance today. The Adjutant General, Nevada Military Department, Brigadier General Andre Berry. Assistant Adjutant General, Nevada Army National Guard, Brigadier General Michael Hannafin. State Command Chief, Master Sergeant, Nevada Air National Guard, Chief Master Sergeant Michael Drisdale. United States Property and Fiscal Officer, Nevada Guard Bureau, Colonel Mary Devine. Director of Staff, Nevada Air National Guard, Colonel David Manson. Wing Command Chief, Master Sergeant, 152nd Airlift Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Mark Prezino. We would also like to welcome all other commanders, honorary commanders, chiefs, and retirees to today's ceremony. For today's ceremony, we would like to give a warm welcome to Colonel Wade's wife, Mia, his mother, Cindy, and his niece, Cynthia McIntyre. We would also like to give a warm welcome to Colonel Hammonds' wife, Sydney Ann, and their children, Alexandra, Brennan, and Heidi, and all the Hammonds and Taylors in attendance. At this moment, I would like to introduce the commander, Nevada Air National Guard, Brigadier General Glenn Martell. Good morning, high rollers. How's everybody doing? We're good? Another great drill, thank you. Um, good morning also family, friends, and distinguished guests. Uh, General Hannafin, Colonel Devine, thanks for being here, appreciate that. One team, one fight. Uh, tag, General Berry, thank you, sir. Today we are witness, uh, here to witness a change of command for the 152nd Airlift Wing, uh, time-honored tradition. Uh, at, at the departing commander, Colonel Wade leaves the wing in good standing. Mia, thank you for letting him take the time uh, to lead this wing. We appreciate it and look forward to you and he having a little more time, uh, hopefully, as you go forward. Uh, Cindy and Cynthia, thank you for uh, being here on, in your future uh, support and, and past support for Colonel Wade. Uh, as he has had time here uh, taken away from the family uh, and as we thank him for his uh, accomplishments today as the wing commander. For the last two and a half years, Eric has led his hometown wing with pride. When you look at his accomplishments on his bio, uh, he talks about uh, driving around uh, here in town and, and watching the old F4 fly over and getting a little motivation from that and, and taking off and, and doing some really good things. Uh, out and about, well first here and then out and about and then coming back. Uh, to serve here in Reno and taking it forward. Um, though he has a long list of accomplishments, one of the first uh, 
I'd like to thank him for is a, ver a superlative maths capability. Uh, that was a huge effort for the wing and our ability to uh, protect the homeland out there and do that is uh, fantastic and one of the best in the, in the country. He also supported across the board increased mission demand for our homeland defense, whether we're responding to floods, fires, or whatever may be needed in the community. So again, a true guardsman. And lastly, I think uh, one of the big ones, he did engage the community as a whole with a very robust honorary commander's program again, supporting the community as a, as a point of pride for the Nevada Air Guard. But most importantly, while deploying and redeploying 296 airmen, the largest deployment in recent Nevada Air National Guard history, he took care of the airmen in the 152nd Airlift Wing. He deployed them and he brought them home safely. And for that, thank you very much, Eric. I appreciate taking, you taking care of our airmen. Colonel Hammonds, who most recently served as the Vice Wing Commander, comes to the wing from Nellis Air Force Base, and his list of accomplishments is likewise exemplary. Distinguished Academy graduate, also qualified on multiple airframes. He's a published author and apparently a noted volcano explorer. You'll have to ask him about that. Sydney Ann, Alexandra, Brennan, and Heidi, thank you for allowing us to borrow him for an extended period of time as he steps into this new role. We appreciate that as well. To the extended Hammonds and Taylor families, thank you for your attendance and for your past and continued support of Jake. I am confident that Colonel Hammonds has the requisite skills to lead the writing of this new chapter of the 152nd Airlift Wing while simultaneously helping us set the broader future for the Nevada Air National Guard. He brings a new set of experiences at the right time in the right place. Jake, my only advice to you is to remember that you are not in this alone. You have your family, and you have the most talented, experienced airmen in the Air Force, bar none. And I challenge you to utilize their knowledge and ideas to propel us further than we think is currently possible. I look forward to your continued leadership, excellence, Nevada style. Battle born. Thank you, General Martel. At this time, Colonel Wade will give his final remarks before relinquishing command of the 152nd Airlift Wing. What's so funny about that? <laughs> Mark Prezina is very nervous. He, think, he, uh, he thinks he knows what I'm going to say right now, but I'm not going to. So, anyway, morning, high rollers. That's better, a little liveliness in here. This is a good day, well, at least for me. <laughs> so thank you all for coming out here, our family and friends, uh, for joining us here today for my last moments as your wing commander, and to see Colonel Hammonds take the reins and begin his new journey. And Jake, while I'm at it and talking about you, if you need anything at all, call Colonel Manson. I'd first like to thank several people for helping me make the last two years and eight months a success for all of us. First, my family. Mia, thank you for always being there and supporting me during my RICO, maybe not so suave military program for 20 years uh, since we met. Thanks for calming me down when things got tough and then bringing me back up. Thank you very much. To my mom and dad, my dad couldn't be here today. My mom, Cindy, thank you for encouraging me and slapping me in line 51 years ago. And tell dad thanks for hooking up. To my little niece, Cynthia, you've always supported me. Thank you for always being there, my little party buddy. To Scott and Trish Sayer, in the second row back there. Thank you for keeping me on the straight and narrow so I could become a Nevada Air Guard officer and the opportunity to begin my career flying the F-4. No doubt if Chris could be here, he would be in as much disbelief as I am for making it this far. To General Barry, thank you for selecting me for this position on April Fool's Day of 2017. Great choice, by the way. 
Honorary Commanders, Bob Davidson, thank you very much. Your busy life, I know how it is. Thank you very much for coming out here and the support that you've given the wing. Uh, the rest of them couldn't make it, um, but a shout out to Roger Norman, uh, Don Goodman, and Ann Silver. They all could not make it today. Now for the front office. My favorite executive administrator, Sherry, why don't you stand up for a second? Let's have a round of applause for Sherry. As you can see, she loves being stood up in front of a big crowd like this. So, uh, but Sherry, thank you. Your job is a beast of a job. Thank you for keeping me on track constantly and working with all the changes. Thank you very much for that. To my vice wing commanders, I actually got a call from Mitch Sperling this morning. Remember that guy? He's still doing good. He says to say hello. Colonel Sperling, Brigadier General Woyak uh, could not be here today, but I still got two in the audience. Baked Hammonds and Todd Starbuck. Where is he? There he is. Thank you guys for doing all the crap that I didn't want to do. Thanks for keeping the daily grind going, all the inspections and the exercises. Thank you very much. I know how big of a beast that Vice Wing Commander job is too, um, and the da daily grind. So we had to divide and conquer. Thank you guys very much. Speaking of dividing and conquering, my favorite wing command chief too, Mark Prezina, my right-hand man, tackled everything together, both of us, we divided and conquered. You handled the enlisted side, you were, uh, gave me very sound advice, and you kept me on the straight and narrow and not straying too far and getting in trouble, so um, thank you for doing that. I really appreciate your counsel and what you've done as the wing command chief. The wing jags, here's one right behind me. Major Dana, Lieutenant Smith. Where's Lieutenant Smith? He's blowing me off again. <laughs> thank both of you guys. You guys are, have been a breath of fresh air. Uh, thank you for being my first wing jag and legal counsel and taking care of all of our long neglected legal issues. Thank you very much. Since I took command in 2017, the 152nd Airlift Wing has undergone one of the biggest, most productive three-year periods in our unit's history. It's not exactly like we had a choice. We were called and we always answered. Our ability to accomplish everything we did proved to be a testament to the competence and resiliency of all of you and the entire High Roller family. My command, starting with the 152nd Intel Squadron. If you're in the Intel Squadron, please stand up. Stand up. There they are. I knew you guys wouldn't blow me off. S stay up. Yeah, I think every commander remembers their first command. You guys were my first command, squadron level. This unit has been stood up to, for active duty Title 10 missions since 9-11. That is a long time that you guys have been tirelessly working. They've worked nonstop 24-7 every single day. I know what goes on over there and I know what you guys do. Thank you for everything you do over there and for our country. Thank you. Please sit down. <laughs> ops group, I see a bunch of long zippers in here. If you're in the ops group, stand up. First, for starters, consider our MAPS mission and our wildland firefighting mission. In a quick time, since we first received the mission in 2016, we've seen our MAFS airmen not only complete their rigorous training process, but begin operations over wildland firefighters right off the bat. In the past three years, the 152nd Airlift Wing, specifically the ops group, has flown more than 150 sorties and airdrops over fires and dropped more than 610,000 gallons of slurry. That's almost as much vodka that's gone through Sangha in the last year. Our ability to quickly ramp up with the mission saved lies in property. Please keep standing. If you're in the mission support group, please stand up. Not just the group, any unit in the group, please stand up. The biggest group in the wing. Also remember that four months after I took command, we were called to support victims of Hurricane Harvey in Houston, Texas. A month later, we were called to support Hurricane Irma in Florida. Then weeks after that, Hurricane Maria devastated the Caribbean, one of the deadliest hurricanes to ever make contact with Puerto Rico. 
In my first year as commander, we assisted state and federal agencies for three different hurricanes. Our calm flight also provided communication support for first responders and citizens during Hurricane Irma. When fires ravaged Northern California that year, the calm flight provided capabilities for medical and support elements at a shelter in Santa Rosa. Overall, 2017 was the busiest year for natural disaster activation and response in the Nevada National Guard's history. Time and time again, the 152nd Airlift Wing has answered the call. Then came the deployments of 2018. For those who didn't know, the National Guard deploys with individual airmen during the Reserve Component Periods, or RCP. Also, our units deployed about every three years as an Air Expeditionary Force. In 2018, both cycles occurred simultaneously. Our wing deployed about 300 airmen during an eight-month stretch. That's nearly a third of our members who left their families and jobs to support our federal mission. It was the unit's largest deployment cycle in five decades. We accomplished this as a team and fulfilled our federal mission in support of the warfighter overseas. And most importantly, everybody returned home safely, and I'm very proud of that. Thank you, Ops and uh, MSG, for what you've done. Please sit. If you're in the medical group, please stand up. Even though we were busy around the world in the past three years, we managed to accomplish a lot here at the base. Our medical group implemented new processes that led our wing into becoming number one of 90 Air Guard wings in IMR, or Individual Medical Readiness. You've kept our flyers going and you've kept all of our supporters around the base supporting our flyers, and that's the mission. Doc Bain, I see you sitting over there. Brigadier General Woyak's not here, but you guys had a lot to do with that, and we are still number one in the nation on IMR. Thank you, guys. Thank you, medical group, for that. Please sit down. Hopefully, they're not busy around the base, but if you're in the engineering squadron, please stand up. In the back. Okay. We accomplished multiple construction projects thanks to Civil Engineering Squadron, including the $11.4 million operations building. Our ops group has moved in to the 21st century with the state-of-the-art facility completed a year ago this week. I can't believe it's already been a year since it opened its door for our ops group. Thank you, Civil Engineering Squadron, for keeping everything moving and everything functioning around the base. Um, Well-deserved. Thank you very much. Please sit down. Okay, if you're in the maintenance group or in your house, stand up. Thank you for being the best in the business, and I sincerely mean that, and I think you guys know that. We got old, tired, broken C-130s. I have no idea how you guys keep these things flying, but you keep them flying, our eight tails flying every day, and you keep our air crew safe. I understand what goes into keeping those things going. Thank you guys. Applaud, please applaud the maintenance group. You guys can have a seat. Our newly refurbished ops building showcases how we're moving the 152nd Airlift Wing into the future. We must, must not forget our past and our rich history. As I stand before you today relinquishing command, I'm reminded of all the great airmen that came before us, men like Wyeth Everhart. Everhart enlisted in the Army Air Corps, Air Corps in 1941. He flew 27 combat missions during World War II before he was shot down and captured by the Germans. He managed to escape prisoner of war camps on two separate occasions before the war ended in 1945. Then in 1948, a major in the newly formed U.S. Air Force, Everhart was asked to stand up the 192nd Fighter Squadron here in Reno. He would be the first commander in our unit's history. Our history includes men like Everhart, a decorated war hero of World War II. There are so many other get greats that have come before us as well. During my time as the 21st commander in this unit's history, I knew I followed great men like Colonel Wyeth Everhart and many others. Everhart eventually left Reno shortly to become a NATO advisor in Europe. He retired from the Air Force in 1964. And what did he do after that? He returned to Reno. 
He was quoted in the local papers saying he returned because, quote, we've lived all over the world and decided to retire in Reno. We like the climate, we like the people, and the way of life, end quote. I happen to completely agree with Colonel Everhart. This is a great community. It's where I was born and raised. It's where I went to high school. It's where I went to college. It's where the roar of the U.S. Air Force got first, first got my attention. One day driving down the road, down Interstate 80 with my best friend Chris Sayer, I heard the F-4 fly overhead. I looked up over at Chris and I said, man, I'd love to fly that thing someday. He was already a crew chief turning wrenches on his F-4. His father, Scott Sayer, was a pilot in the Nevada Air Guard. Well, as they say, the rest is history. I followed Chris and joined the Nevada Air National Guard. As, after we converted to the, 150, the 152nd Airlift Wing into C-130s, I left for active duty. I spent time as an Air Liaison Officer, or a JTAC as they're called now, to the U.S. Army 1st Infantry Division in Würzburg, Germany, which included a three-month combat tour in Tuzla, Bosnia, where this nation's civil war. It was sad to leave Reno, but it was an amazing experience that helped me see the world, and most importantly, I met my wife, Mia, while in active duty in Europe. After six years overseas, I returned to the U.S. for three years at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base in North Carolina, teaching our new pilots and whizzos how to fly the Strike Eagle. It was a great couple of tours back to back, but just as Colonel Everhart did, I knew I wanted to return to Reno. From my time as the International Affairs Chief at State Headquarters to taking command of the Intelligence Squadron to serving as commander of the 152nd Airlift Wing, it truly has been a great experience and my honor. This unit is a family with a great legacy if you don't remember anything else I say today, please remember that. For current and future leaders, here in the hangar, please maintain that sense of family in this unit and continue to build on the legacy of the high rollers. Lastly, second to last actually, if you're a commander in the wing right now, please stand up. We've had a, we have a great leadership team here in the wing. These are your current and future leaders standing up right here. T turn around, take a look at them. These are your leaders. I ask that you support all of your commanders. They have a very tough task and every one of them are doing their best. Hats off to you guys. Please take a seat. And then, Please stand up if you were here during our F4 era. I don't care what job you did, but if you were in, please stand up. This is for the guys, the old crusty guys in the second row back here. They're still around. I'm proud to have been part of that piece of our history. I'm even more proud to have the honor of standing before you as the last F4 air crew in the Nevada Air National Guard. I hope I've made you proud as well. Here's to you guys. Please have a seat. For my parting shot, I hope I've met all of your expectations as your leader of this amazing wing for the better part of three years. I've used my best resources to help me make sound decisions. I've done my best to be humble and kind, but maybe a few of you have needed a little different style of motivation. But I'll bet it worked, and you're all a better leader because of it. As my sun sets here, I ask that you keep the high roller spirit going. Live for the day, keep the mission going to the very best of your ability, and to ops, keep flying, take chances, and smoke them if you got them. Rico out. Thank you, Colonel Wade. At this time, will the official party join Colonel, Colonel Wade at center stage?
Attention to orders. Order number GC01, the Department of the Air Force, has announced effective to November 2019 by the order of the Commander, Nevada Air National Guard, Colonel Jacob L. Hammonds, is assigned as Commander, 152nd Airlift Wing, Air National Guard Base, Reno, Nevada. The custodian of the colors, the first sergeant, passes the colors and all they represent to the outgoing commander, Colonel Eric Wade, for the last time. The outgoing commander then relinquishes his command by passing the colors to the General Martel, who then passes the colors and hands the command to the incoming commander, Colonel Jacob Hammonds. Colonel Hammonds assumes the duties as the commander of the 152nd Airlift Wing. This time-honored process is complete when the incoming commander then returns the colors to the first sergeant, charging him with maintaining the symbol of the command. At ease, please be seated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the new 152nd Airlift Wing Commander, Colonel Jacob L. Hammonds. Thank you, High Rollers. Thank you for being here this morning. We've got a busy schedule day ahead of us, and it's a great way to get started. I want to thank everybody in attendance today. General Barry, sir, thank you for being here for this. Uh, General Hannafin, uh, appreciate it. Chief Drisdale, uh, General Martel, of course, um, and all commanders and chiefs that are in the audience. Uh, thank you, Chaplain Crandall, for that invocation. Very, uh, very much uh, appreciated. And everybody that went into uh, protocol uh, for making today's event happen. I know this just doesn't happen overnight, although you make it happen overnight. Um, thank you to our Honorary Squadron Commanders for being here, Mr. Davidson, and everyone else that was uh, not able to make it out. Look forward to working with you. Uh, leaders and friends from the Las Vegas area, Zoop, Coco, thank you for making it out here. Um, Chris Finan, my Academy roommate, is in the crowd today. Really appreciate him being here. Please don't ask him any stories from our time uh, at, at the Air Force Academy. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, to my family uh, who, who made it out in mass. So really appreciate uh, getting to this point. Um, my parents, uh, my brother Matt, Doug, um, everybody, uh, all the cousins that are out here, uh, Mac and Pat, Ryan, Colin, Ashley, Melissa, um, and especially to uh, Sydney, Alexandra, Brennan, and Heidi. You guys know how special you are to me. Uh, how this is, this is all possible through you and, and your support. And uh, just thank you, uh, thank you all for uh, being out here today. I want to stay, start with uh, Colonel Wade, sir. I want to thank you for your leadership, your personal mentorship, and your service to the 152nd Airlift Wing over the years. Um, Mia, thank you for your steadfast support and for allowing your husband to give so much of himself to ensure the success and safety of this organization. Thank you very much. Rico, you're a warfighter who has flown combat missions downrange. You have put yourself in harm's way to ensure our nation's freedom. You have led at the squadron, group, and wing level. Your leadership was tested, and you have passed that test. You led the wing through the stand-up of the Mobile Airborne Firefighting System mission and the largest simultaneous AEF and RCP deployment in the unit's history. You are one of 0.4% of Air National Guard officers who are graduated wing commanders and one of only 90 wings in the Air Guard. As Kipling said, you have walked with kings and not lost the common touch you have kept your head about you when others are losing theirs, and you have filled the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run. Rico, Mia, congratulations and Godspeed in your future endeavors. <laughs> Mr.
Most importantly, to the commanders and chief and men and women of the 152nd Airlift Wing, thank you for being here today. I am humbled and honored to be standing on this stage. While I can squarely put today's event under the heading of things I never thought I'd get to do in the Air Force, I recognize the additional significance and responsibility that command brings with it. We are entrusted with the well-being of 1,016 Nevada airmen and execution of our federal and state missions. I intend to work with all of you to prove that the 152nd Airlift Wing is the most ready, most resilient, and most relevant airlift wing in the Guard. To do this, we must assertively care for our people while delivering tactical airlift and expeditionary mission support to the combatant commander. Together, this is a responsibility which we can accomplish, and we can leave this organization better than we found it. As Airmen of the Nevada Air National Guard, you carry on a legacy of valor that stretches back to the very beginnings of, the, of our great Air Force history. Colonel Wade hit on, on some of those. And starting in 1948 with the 192nd Fighter Squadron, you have fought and won our, nation wars, our nation's wars in P-51s in Korea, F-86s, RB-57s, RF-101s, and RF-4s as the best aerial, aerial reconnaissance outfit in the world. Nevada airmen courageously fought and won in the skies over Iraq during Operation Desert Storm. And for nearly a quarter of a century in the C-130, you have provided tactical airlift and expeditionary mission support for our contingent overseas contingency operations. The theme of this storied history is that no matter the tasking, high rollers deliver. We stand here today on the shoulders of giants. We owe those airmen that came before us a debt of gratitude and a contract for excellence. The same bravery that coursed through the blood of Doolittle Raiders is in your veins. The, sum, the same unwavering heroism of Eddie Rickenbacker, the Tuskegee Airmen, Bob Pardo, Lance Sijon, Robin Olds, and now John Chapman beats in your hearts. The same devotion to duty of our unit's only combat fatality, Lieutenant Frank Salazar, resides in you. Lieutenant Salazar's daughter, Diana Brown, and Bobber, her hus husband Bob are here with us today, and uh, I'd, I'd like to embarrass them whenever they're here, and I'd like to ask them to stand up, if you would, please. There's a quote in Diana's book from the Honorable Carey Ceremony that occurred last year in Hawaii repatriating the remains of some of our Korean War heroes. It goes, First Lieutenant Frank Salazar, who was uh, activated from the Nevada Air National Guard, volunteered to leave his duty station and to serve in Korea. He was shot down on New Year's Eve 1952 while flying a recon mission over enemy territory. Diana, we will never forget your father. He embodies the courage of the Nevada Air National Guard and the sacrifice that our families make in order for us to defend our nation's freedom. Freedom is not free, and your father paid the ultimate price. And we are here today to repay, in some small measure, not just a debt of gratitude, but as Churchill said, a debt of blood, toil, tears, and sweat. Thank you. High Rollers, I challenge you today to honor that legacy, embrace your place in history as a member of the greatest volunteer fighting force ever assembled, and take pride in the knowledge that you are part of the lucky few of Nevada Air National Guardsmen. We have a proud history, a mandate to accomplish our current mission, and a future filled with opportunity. As a wing, we have five strategic priorities that guide us into that future. They are readiness, care for our members and families, diversity and inclusion, community, and force development. The wing's execution of these five priorities is clear. We will posture our forces to advance both readiness and resolve for the near peer fight. We will aggressively care for our members and families, for without our people and the support from home, mission success is unattainable. We require diversity of thought and inclusion, for the power of diverse perspectives allows us to reach better solutions for our toughest problems. And as we shift our focus to a multi-domain operational construct, we will prioritize force development to ensure our next generation of airmen is, is poised to take the flag. General Barry, General Martel, the 152nd Airlift Wing is born from battle, is ready for battle, and stands ready to win against 21st century threats. 
Our mission is to fly, fight, and win. Our values are integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Our creed is to be the guardians of freedom and justice, our nation's sword and shield, its century and avenger. We will defend our country with our lives. We will never leave an airman behind. We will never falter, and we will never fail. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Hammonds. The men and women of the Nevada Air National Guard are proud of Colonel Hammonds and look forward to working with him as he takes on new challenges. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please congratulate Colonel Hammonds and Colonel Wade. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for coming.